Hey everyone, my name is Sarah Levon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am here to talk to you all about birth balls, which a birth ball can just be an exercise ball or even a yoga ball. They're all the same thing, but this tool can be so helpful for your labor, for your pregnancy, and even your postpartum experience. So I'm gonna to talk to you about why it can be helpful, how to use it, how to choose the right size, and any other little tidbits I come up with in the meantime. But before I do that, make sure you subscribe down below, give it a like, share it with a friend, and then let's get moving. I feel like once you get pregnant and as you get closer to your labor and birth, it is super common for you to feel like you have to find the thing that might help you in your labor. And one of those things that I think is just sort of in the culture of birth, especially in the United States, is that you should have a birth ball, right? And do I say you should have a birth ball? I actually do think you should have a birth ball. In fact, I actually include it with some of my in-person packages when I'm with clients for their labor and birth because there is so much that you can do with a birth ball. There's so many ways that it can help you in your labor. So let's talk about the benefits of a birth ball. And again, I wanna be very clear because I think people have to like Google birth ball when it's not anything special. Like anybody that's marketing you a birth ball is literally just changing the terminology. They're all one in the same. This is called an exercise ball, yoga ball. I will link the one that I send my clients whenever they're my clients in labor so that you can see they're really cheap, honestly, and for the most part can be super helpful all throughout your labor, birth, and postpartum, okay? So what are the benefits? The first one is you maybe have heard me say before, motion is lotion. And so the idea with motion in labor, and I'm gonna speak specifically to labor, but this also includes prep for labor and then postpartum, which I'll get to, but the idea is as your body is getting ready for labor, we want motion to help lubricate the pelvis and help this baby get in the right position. And even when you do this, look at the baby's head, okay? Or if baby is facing this way, which is ideal, you're not, I'll turn it around so that you actually, I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see it a little better. Ideally, we want the back of the baby's head towards the front of you. But when I move my hips, look at that little head. It's rocking and rolling in my pelvis. And so as baby is trying to navigate the pelvis, and I will say, if you haven't seen my positions for labor video, my peanut ball video, my how to engage the baby video, like all these things I talk about the pelvis and the baby kind of getting in, which if it's floating around up here, that's not where we want it when you're in labor, right? We want it in, down, and then out of you, all right? So the idea with motion is lotion is these little movements help baby like, hey, where's my way? Ooh, I found it, and then wiggle my way out. All right, so that, that movement, any kind of movement, and I'm gonna say just to start these big hip circles, exaggerated hip circles on the ball are super helpful for moving the baby, but also as I stretch one way, I'm like, oh, no tension there, but I go over here and I'm like, oh, I feel some in my butt. And so you can identify where you might have some tension in your hips or your pelvis, which tension, you think about, if we're trying to create an environment to help baby out, right? Tension just restricts baby from coming down and out. And so instead we want relaxation of specifically your pelvic floor, which is muscle, right? Think of muscles are stretchable. And so we can, we can move around and that's going to help that pelvic floor soften and relax to help the baby down and out. So this motion, any which way, right? Circles, figure eights, where you're swinging around back and forth, right? And sort of identifying, I feel some tension in my hip when I do this and I'm like, I'm gonna just move back and forth. It's gonna soften out that movement. Now, a birth ball in labor gives you full freedom of movement while you're having contractions too. So this may be prep for labor to soften the pelvic floor, make space for baby, but it also may be that freedom of movement, having some control, being upright, which helps for gravity to help baby down. And then it also can help with pain relief when you're in labor because it may cause some non-painful pressure on your perineum or your vagina. So as baby's coming down, it's like a lot, right? And to sit on something firm may feel really uncomfortable, but the birth ball is kind of smushy. It may feel good to bounce. And that bouncing, you can bounce in a non-painful way sort of helping to soften, helping use gravity, creating movement for that motion is lotion, lubricating baby down and out, to allow for re reduced pressure on the perineum, but also 
that non-painful pressure can actually help reduce your sensation of pain in labor. So we want some pressure. It's like if we have a wound, right? If I just slit my hand open and I'm like, ow, that hurts so bad. And all of a sudden I go, mm, I'm first of all compressing the wound so I don't bleed too much. But when I press on it, it reduces the sensation of pain because I have pressure on my wound, right? While your vagina isn't a wound, hopefully yet or ever, right? It is going through a lot and you have a lot of pain sensations and nerves going there. There's a lot of action happening down there in labor. And so what happens is that head, by helping it down and then creating that non-painful like resistance on your on your vagina or your perineum that that can actually help you reduce pain there's actually a st one study there's not a ton of studies on birth balls i will say it's hard to study specifically pain in labor because pain is such a subjective thing but one study found a decrease in one number on a pain scale. So if I ask you what's your pain in labor, you say an eight out of 10, you add a birth ball to the situation, now it's a seven. We will take it in labor, right? Because the goal is pain relief to a place of it being more tolerable for you. So we love pain relief in labor, right? And if this tool can help that pain relief, that's exactly what we want. Now, where is your pain sensation in labor and how can this help? First of all, any kind of shifting in the uterus, right? With contractions, contractions hurt. Your uterus is filling your entire abdomen and it's a, it's a squeeze, like a Charlie horse in your entire uterus. Okay, it comes and goes, we know this. Go to my what is labor video. I have lots of other videos on this. But the idea is with that movement, that's gonna help bring oxygen, which is blood flow to the uterus versus being stagnant we're having less blood flow. It's like if you go on a walk, right? Afterwards, you kind of feel your body pulsating because your muscles are really like needing that extra oxygen because they're at work. And that's the case for your uterus when it's at work. So when we move, we help to release that, that oxygen or that blood flow to work even better in the uterus. Now it's always working, hopefully, right? But it's just gonna help to move that oxygen there, create some space and movement. Now, as you're upright, we want more pressure in your vagina. So you may feel pressure in your vagina. When I say perineum, that's just the space on the bottom part of your vagina to your butthole. So when you're upright, you might feel pressure in your vagina or it might feel like it's in your butthole, like you have to poop. That's totally normal, but it can be really uncomfortable. Like you have to take a big poop. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm trying not to poop my pants. You know, and if you're feeling like you're gonna poop your pants and you're at home, please go to the hospital because that might be a sign that you're getting closer to labor, right? But as you're having sensations in your perineum or as you're feeling more pressure down there, which some people even feel at the end of pregnancy, not even in labor yet, this non-painful pressure resistance of the birth ball can help. So how do you choose the right size of a birth ball? Because size does matter based on your height. And I will put the height requirements down below for what size to get. Typically though, if you're 5'3 to 5'4 and below, you're gonna purchase a 55 centimeter birth ball. If you're 5'4 to 5'8, I'm 5'5 and a half, so I'm here at 65 centimeters. And then the, anywhere up from 5'8 would be a 75 centimeter ball. Now the key here is, we don't want you squatting to the ground, okay? I don't want you so low on your birth ball that you're like literally squatting, which might feel good, but it's also not good for your, your joints, okay? We want you at about a 90 degree angle. So if you look at me on mine, we can look at my legs. If you look at the bend of my knee down here, it's about a 90 degree angle, maybe a tiny bit above, but this is perfect sizing for me, all right? So then when I'm able, I can be flat footed and I'm stable. I'm not like woo, rocking around and falling off, which we definitely don't want. So that's why having too big of a birth ball might be precarious for you, all right? But if your ball is too big, just deflate it a little bit, okay? So if you get the 75, you're like, shoot, that's what I have. Make it work, okay, just deflate it. So you're at about a 90 degree angle, not up here, where then you're like trying to roll and you're like risking falling over, okay? So we don't wanna squat, okay? We, don't, we want a 90 degree angle and then we can have full mobility of our hips. So then when do you start using a birth ball, all right? Or an exercise ball or whatever, honestly, whenever you want, okay? If you're starting to feel uncomfortable in your pregnancy, I give this to my clients when they first hire me. So some people literally pee on a stick and call me and I send them their birth ball once they sign on with me, okay? And you can start, it, in earlier pregnancy, we're not doing it for changing or helping the position of the baby. It's entirely 
to help lubricate your joints, create everything that is nice and, and slippery versus constricted. And the more pressure you have, the bigger you get, the more uncomfortable you get. That's a lot of stress on your pelvis, right? And so what you do instead is you create that motion to lubricate the joints and help you feel less uncomfortable. So it also helps with, with a little bit of strength building, right? You can do a little bit of one, two, three, lift, one, two, three, lift, one, two, three, lift here and there. It helps with your posture. It's a very subtle exercise, especially because we want your body toned for labor to help with posture, back strength, ab strength, and then hip and butt strength, especially as you do this, I'm contracting my butt and leg muscles, right? And so those subtle movements help to build tone in your body that can support your labor throughout your pregnancy. Now, once you're 37 weeks, I want you on your birth ball, all right? So you gotta get up and daily, when you're watching TV, when you're working at the computer, bounce around, hip circles, figure eights, stretch this way, ooh. Wow. If you wanna go into labor, lubricated with that motion is lotion. Then when you're in labor, being on a birth ball can be really helpful. This is where your instinct kicks in. If you're like, oh, I love bouncing, circles in between, while I'm in labor, all I do is rock back and forth, but the birth ball, instead of some sort of stagnant furniture, is gonna even allow for little micro movements while you're in labor, and movement in labor is really helpful with pain and also helpful to help baby get in position. And I'm not moving my hips, I'm just moving my legs, but even that is gonna help lubricate the area, okay? The one position that I wouldn't suggest specific for pregnancy that say I would be able to do is to be entirely flat on your back. You can now sit down and lean on it, that's fine, but if you are flat on your back in pregnancy, this is what the, the kind of the rules are for sleeping as well, there's this huge artery behind your belly that the pressure of your belly can constrict and you can actually pass out which we don't want happening when you're on a bouncy ball and then you roll yourself off and Lord knows what happens. So please don't go on your back, but otherwise there really isn't any other position that I can think of and obviously check with your provider because like if you're on bed rest or say you have a placenta previa or something, like maybe not. So check with your provider as always whether or not this is something that you can do. But otherwise I can't really think of any other position that would be contraindicated or that you wouldn't want to do on a birth ball. So then in labor throughout, you can do lots of different positions. And in fact, I will link my birth ball guide in the description box down below. And then also right below, you can scroll and find my PDF birth ball guide that gives you lots of different options for how to use your birth ball. Moral of the story is motion is lotion. So you can do whatever you want. And then I'll give you one extra tip that you can find on that PDF as an, as, as an example, specifically for labor that I see all the time. And that tip is to lean over the birth ball. And right now I'm upright because I don't have a pregnant belly. So you probably couldn't do this in labor. What, but what this looks like is this. So then you can lean on the birth ball. And this is where it's sort of whatever feels right, but I would definitely put a pillow under your knees, especially if you're on a hardwood floor, if you're on carpet, you may not need that. But otherwise you can extend your arms and stretch your arms and back. You can lean over, you can lean back, you can rock back and forth, but that forward leaning position with the ball allows for some movement in your hips which can be really helpful for your labor. Also, obviously you're in upright position. If you're having any kind of back labor, I have three videos on that. Hey, that leaning over position can be really nice to help kind of pull baby off your tailbone and help with any back pressure you have. Now, also in this position, super accessible for your partner. So if you haven't taken my coping with labor class, you need to take your, my coping with labor class because that's gonna give you and your partner all sorts of tools to cope throughout labor, okay? So this is my like bonus position, but obviously sitting, leaning, anything you can find, you can put your legs on it while you're laying on TV. But what I love the most is this birth ball gives motion to your labor, your birth, and then your postpartum. So the other tip for postpartum, because a lot of people, they use it through their labor, they use it through their pregnancy, and then they like deflate it in the, in the postpartum room. You can bring it to the hospital with you if you want. You can ask if your hospital has one, but then they're like done with it. Whereas I always say just, eat, well, you can deflate it to bring it home, but once you get home, partners, blow this ball back up, because guess what? It is the perfect bouncing tool for your baby once you have them, right? And that if instead of standing and shh, 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 right? So much work, 
just sit here and it's this natural bounce. It's comfortable for you. It may actually help with creating some more lubrication and help with blood flow to the area as long as it feels good where there's no pressure on your healing vagina or even your C-section scar. So the birth ball can even be helpful in the postpartum period. And then obviously as your kid gets older, I know I remember seeing these big balls as a kid and I was like, I love that. It seems like such a fun toy. Thanks everyone for being with me here today. If you want more from me, you can head on down to the description box down below. I have all sorts of things and then check out the scrolly bar where you can check out some of my online classes and then make sure you check out the coping with labor class because I know I mentioned that class in this one. This is just a start to kind of the tip of the iceberg of all the ways that can help you to cope with labor. I know that one of the number one concerns for pregnant people and they, as they anticipate their labor and birth is the pain of labor. And so that entire two and a half to three hour class is an opportunity for you to learn all sorts of techniques, all sorts of tools for your toolbox to help you cope with labor. One of them being using a birth ball. Follow me on Instagram. There's more stuff going on over there. If you have questions for coffee and questions, check out Instagram, or you can comment down below and I may answer your question in a future video. And then until next time, don't forget to flex and flow and I will see you soon. Bye. What kind of bloopers are we talking about here? <laughs> I'm gonna be so loosey goosey down there by the end of this. Yes. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. I look weird. And that is to lean par my feet. Are they disgusting? Okay, I already feel the stretch in my groin. Rock and roll, move the baby. Rocky rolly. Hey guys, <laughs> this is creepy. <laughs> the baby looks so weird. Ow! That like. Totally hit my reflex. That was a good one. <laughs> Howie, my funny knee bone. <laughs> it really hit.